Welcome to Reflections for the unchurched, the underchurched, and those who just want a little bit of church. This week's gospel reading appeals to my imagination. John the Baptist is in the company of Jesus for the first time, but both are in their mother's wombs. John and indeed we all can leap for joy in the company of Jesus. A reading from Luke's Gospel. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to, do, to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with her loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that, that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed for the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Here ends the reading. For the past two weeks of gospel readings, we have heard from John the Baptist how to get ready for the coming of the Lord. In today's scripture, a not yet born John the Baptist leaps for joy in the womb of his mother Elizabeth when he is in the company of his cousin Jesus, also in the womb of his mother. I love the image of second cousins meeting for the first time and John's ebullient reaction. I like knowing too that the second time that scripture has them together is when Jesus is baptized by his cousin in another amazing biblical scene. It is in this scene, however, that I love what Mary says. She says that her soul magnifies the Lord and her spirit rejoices in her Savior. With the death of my brother Rick still fresh, I need Mary and Elizabeth and John and Jesus in my life. In fact, I need lots of young mothers and children in my life right now. If they are around, there is hope and the future is present and real and the oppressive tide of grief can dissipate at least for a short time. For me, the tide of grief seems to go out in the company of young people. And if I am fortunate, I can pull out my grade school magnifying glass and imagine Rick's soul magnifying the Lord as Mary's soul did. And with the help of children, I will rejoice in my savior, the one who saved and now holds in his hand the soul of my brother. If our Lord can, as Mary exclaims, scatter the proud and bring down the powerful while lifting up the lowly and filling the hungry with good things, then I know that his promise of mercy for Brother Rick and for each of us will be kept forever.
Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. My favorite song about the promise of heaven is Winona Judd's I Can Only Imagine. I love imagining Jesus and John together. I love imagining two being together again with Brother Rick, all in good God's time. When I think of it, I leap for joy. In the meantime, my mind's eye sees him sitting in the comfort of Jesus. Enjoy. joy.